guideline classification. One of the things that's happened in the third version of ISRA is a new system of actually classifying guidelines. By classifying, uh, we, we refer to the following. So, for instance, the most fundamental and upfront change is the fact that a guideline is now one of two types. A guideline is either what we call a directive or a rule. We'll go into the detail of this more in a minute. Every guideline is classified under a category, either advisory, required, or mandatory. The language, as we've previously talked about, we now support both C90 and C99, but not every guideline is relevant to both languages. We've introduced a concept called decidability. We'll talk about that in some detail. And we've also explicitly described each guideline according to whether its analysis scope is what we call single translation unit or whether it's a system rule. So going back to this distinction between what we call rules and what we call directives. Two different types of guideline. Rules are what we define as, as guidelines which have well-defined requirements. The other aspect of them is that they are statically enforceable. They are automatically enforceable with a static analysis tool which means that the specification of a rule is something which is intrinsically associated with the code itself. Now, in contrast to that, there are certain guidelines which we call directives. And the point about a directive is that a directive is sometimes rather loosely defined, which means that different tools may allow alternative interpretations. A directive might also address an issue of process or documentation. The, the point about distinguishing rules and directives is that in, in previous versions of MISRA C, these were the, the distinction between these two types of guideline was somewhat blurred and it was certain of the rules in MISRA 2004 could be uh, referred to as not statically enforceable, for instance. And this is probably how we would describe directives in MISRA 2012. Directives are, in a sense, not statically enforceable. Sometimes it is possible for a tool to provide enforcement assistance, but uh, in general a directive is not something that can be unequivocally enforced by inspection of the source code alone. Some examples. Rules like, say, Rule 11.3, a cast shall not be performed between a pointer to object type and a different pointer to object type. Just an example of a rule which can quite easily be enforced simply by inspection of source code. Directives, on the other hand, Directive 3.1, all code shall be traceable to documented requirements. Effectively, this is a process requirement. It is not, in essence, a property of the source code, but nevertheless an important requirement. Directive 4.3, assembly language shall be encapsulated and isolated. Now this is a requirement which certainly relates to the source code, but it is what we would describe as something which is loosely defined in the sense that the directive does not precisely define what is meant by encapsulation or isolation. There are various ways in which that can be done, 
but it is not a guideline that is precisely defined and therefore we exclude it from the set of rules. We call it a directive. The principle is good, but the specification of the rule is, is left to a certain amount of interpretation. Guideline categories. Guideline categories existed in previous versions of MISRA. So we have advisory guidelines. And the principle behind advisory guidelines is that they are essentially recommendations and non-compliance is acknowledged as being legitimate at the discretion of the user. All that MISRA C says is that non-compliance should be documented but it doesn't have to be documented in the form of a formal deviation. As opposed to what we, recall, what we call required guidelines. And the thing about a required guideline has always been that non-compliance with a required guideline needs to be supported by a formal deviation. Now we're going to talk about deviations quite a bit more a bit later on. But what's happened in MISRA 2012 is that we've introduced a third category of guideline, what we call a mandatory guideline. And the principle here is that there are certain guidelines which are so fundamental, so non-controversial, that they're considered to be things that cannot be uh, avoided. They are guidelines which must always be obeyed. Compliance is always required. The principle is that most mandatory guidelines are things which there should be no need ever to produce a deviation. Now one of the uh, changes in MISRA 2012 is this concept of decidability and it is in a sense quite a philosophical concept and needs a certain amount of thought to uh, understand. The principle of decidability is applied to every rule and the principle is that a rule is described as decidable if it is always possible in any program for a tool to determine whether code is compliant. Otherwise, the rule is undecidable. Now, the point about decidability is quite important because it describes whether a rule can be unequivocally enforced by automatic means. So take, for example, a rule like 12.4, a decidable rule. Evaluation of constant expressions should not lead to unsigned integer wraparound. That's a fairly straightforward rule which can be automatically enforced quite easily. And it can be enforced with absolutely no question in any piece of code whatsoever because it requires only an analysis of a single expression. Rule 13.5, on the other hand, the right-hand operand of a logical AND or a logical OR operator shall not contain persistent side effects. The problem with a rule like that is that in many cases it may be decidable, it may be very uh, obvious most of the time to work out whether that rule has been obeyed. But it cannot always be enforced. A static analysis tool cannot always determine whether the right hand operand of one of those operators contains persistent side effects. In order to do so it would need to have access to the entire calling tree of the program. It would need to have access to all the code in the program. 
And even if it did, it is theoretically not possible to guarantee that that rule is always complied with. We should talk about this a little bit more. But there's another area in which we classify guidelines, and that's what we call analysis scope. And again, this is quite an important distinction, because there are some guidelines which require analysis simply of a single translation unit. So for instance, rule 16.4, every switch statement shall have a default label. That is a very easy rule to enforce. It's, it's, um, it can be done quite easily by any static analysis program, simply by looking at a single function, a single switch statement. It's a single, simple bit of syntactic analysis. A system rule, on the other hand, presents rather more problems. Rule 8.7, functions and objects shall not be defined with external linkage if they are referenced in only one translation unit. That is not a difficult rule to enforce in the sense that it uh, is decidable rule but it does involve analysis of all, all the code in the entire program. And therefore, the task of doing the analysis is more extensive. Rule 13.5, which is the same rule that we looked at just now, the right-hand operand of a logical and or logical or operator shall not contain persistent side effects. That is a rule, again, where in order to do a proper analysis of it, if the right-hand operand contains function calls, we need to be able to analyze the calling tree. We need to be able to analyze across functions, across translation units. So it becomes a more extensive piece of analysis. So the distinction between a single translation unit rule and a system rule is quite significant both in terms of the, the challenge of doing the analysis and the time that may be taken in order to do that. So here, here we have a summary, really, of these areas of classification which we just referred to. The classification by category, the classification by language, the classification by decidability and the classification by analysis scope. Now, we have in MISRA C 2012, as you see on the top line there, we have 16 directives and 143 rules. Both rules and directives are classified by category. And as, as we've remarked earlier, we have now this new category of mandatory guidelines, of which there are 10. They're, in fact, all rules. The classification by language, we notice that there are 13 rules which are actually specific to a particular language version. Decidability. There are 26 rules which are classified as undecidable. They cannot be statically enforced with absolute certainty. Analysis scope. There are 140, 104 rules which are enforceable within a single translation unit and 39 which are classified as system rules. <coughs> 